Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn them notifications on. Currently up on our silage pit, giving it a roll and that is where today's video centres around. So we finished our second cut silage yesterday and you will have seen that in the last video. Now I'm doing one of the uh, important jobs of silaging and that's giving the pit a real good roll before the sheet up. So it's currently about 11 o'clock. I've been up here for, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour now probably. And I've probably got another half an hour's rolling to do. It takes a long, long time when we're up at the top of the pit full after second cut because you've got to be extremely careful that you don't catch the cab up in the roof. So the plan for today is to finish off what I'm doing now and then to get the sheet on. Now when we sheet up, if any of you that are new around here, we like to put round bales on our silage pit and I say we like to, it's something that we did last year for the first time and it worked really well and again this year we've got surplus straw so we're going to get it undercover it's already undercover now it's currently under the dutch barn so it's going to come from out of the dutch barn and into here just means that when we do the harvest this year we can get more bales inside because we've already got some in here but the plan this year is to try and go a little bit higher with the bales so last year we stacked them one high where we just put a layer of bales across the whole of the silage pit whereas this year we're going to try doing two high in the middle so we'll probably have them singularly for the first two against the sides because they can tend to just dip towards the cubicles a little bit but when we get into the middle where we're, where we're away from the sides and it's a lot more level we're going to go and try and go two high maybe even three i can't see us getting three high in here it'll probably just be two the idea of that is to just get a little bit more weight on the top but also to get a few more bales undercover so i've already broken one of my cv aerials this morning the catch in the roof probably should take them off for doing this but they're a good gauge it's my pointing stick they're a very good gauge to sort of tell how close to the roof you are you can hear them from in here when they start catching the roof so you know that the cab is getting closer to the roof it's very deceiving drawing into where i am now with the beams because the beams go drop away like that so it looks like you're almost going to touch them but i've got out and had a look just before and it's like this much room between the cab and the beam but i like to keep that much room i don't want to be scraping the top of the cab and bending the cab frames or anything so you've probably been able to see just me rolling up here that the pit is very full and to be fair dad's got dad's got a real nice level top on this it does just dip away at the sides he's always going to do that and that's why we, well, we put two rows of tyres right against the sides. We don't put bales right against the sides because we don't want bales sort of tipping away and falling into the cubicles. Especially, you know, they're on to break something down there or fall on a car. We don't want that. So we sort of put tyres down the walls. But you'll see that anyway. Anyway, I'm going to finish rolling this and I shall catch up with all of you lot once we start to pull the sheet on and stick some bales up here few tyres on here now and we're just starting to bring the bales up so we don't come any further than here back with them so about the first bay and that's just because we've got a big step off here so we don't want to fall in back and we also leave a big enough gap from the side so that if they do dip down the sides they're not going to fall into the cubicles of the cows here comes with another there we go that's laid down. So we've got a sheet folded back. First row now in. So we'll now get the second row in and then sort of pyramid them so they'll be bale, bale, and then there'll be a bale stacked in the middle of there like that. I'm currently filming on my phone because my camera's died, so I hope this is good enough quality. Comes another bale. There's the back filled in. 
And if we just come here, that's how we're looking so far. So you'll see we're not putting them this side or that side and you actually see that bale leaning down. And the same here. If we put top ones on, they're more likely to fall off. So Mark's bringing some more bales around and leaving them there. And me and dad are just getting some tires up, ready to throw down the sides. Just up in the roof now. And there's 41 bales up here so far. And we're sort of thinking, just jump down, that we're gonna fill to about here somewhere with them stacked on top, but the ramp just starts to drop down. So we're not gonna be able to put them on top then because they've got a risk of falling off the top. Hopefully we can continue with them one high though, all the way down to the doors. Whether that'll work or not, I don't know, but we will see. Now this is Mark's favorite job. This is, he loves doing this every year. He gets so excited about it. He can't sleep the night before we do it. He absolutely loves putting bales up here. Coming in now with a bale. Hello. There's the process. Nicely in there like that. And then we just keep rolling the sheet forward as we go along. But this is the best way of getting a nice bit of weight on the top of this silage. And the thing with this, because it's so dry, it needs more weight to keep it better. If it was wetter, it wouldn't quite need it so much, but drier stuff doesn't pack down the same. And there we go, there's the sheeting up job complete. Didn't show the rest of the sheeting up, mainly just because everything I was filming on had died. But I've charged them up now and we're done. So in the end, we have got 100 bales exactly of round bale straw up on top of here. And those of you'll be able to see over there, we've pretty much emptied the Dutch barn, which is brilliant. That gives us a good amount of storage now for this year's harvesting. And we've got all this straw under cover as well. So we've come to just about where the ramp starts. Two reasons we didn't carry on with the bales. One, because there's a risk of this sinking more and them tipping forwards and rolling into the doors at the front. Not likely to happen. But two, it doesn't take long to get through the silage on the ramp. And we don't want to be in the situation where we have to start moving bales really quickly after we started feeding. So we have finished off the front with loads of tires. Now, to finish off just down the front by the doors, I had to take a few grabfuls of silage, mainly because the ramp was going further than where the doors come to. You have to have it that way to get enough of a ramp to get up into the top. We've used five grabs of silage off the front and we might get four or five grabs worth of waste where we've had to cut it through. But in, in return for having to do that, we've got another five or six trailer loads up the top. Do the maths it works out you might as well have a few wasted grabfuls then a few wasted trailerfuls so that brings us to the end of today's video a little bit different way of sheeting up i wanted to show you all how we do it something we've only done for well this is the second year now years ago we used to put little square bales all over the side of the sheet but last year we decided we put some rounds on we got them left over same again this year and it is really worth it anyway I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one.